everybody and good morning. 116 million Americans experience chronic pain each year, but now there may finally be a cure for those suffering. Researchers from St. Louis University finding a brain receptor that acts as an off switch for the pain. The development could lead to the creation of non-addictive drugs. Here now with more from the NYU School of Medicine is Dr. Devi. Doctor, thank you for being here with us oh, this thanks. morning. Sounds like an amazing breakthrough. If I understand it right, generally our opiates, which is our most of our painkillers now, yeah. they block the pain pathway, but there's another, another pathway that causes a high and an addiction. Exactly. And this removes that. Uh, it can. So it, this pathway actually has to do with nerve-related pain. Now, I got a few tweets from people who were concerned that if you turn off the pain signal, can't you get injured more easily? So they bring up a good point. I mean, normally, let's say that you put your hand on a hot stove or something, right? There's a signal that goes from the hand that goes back to your spinal cord, and then that tells you, oh, your hand's in trouble, something's going wrong, then it sends it up to the brain. So now, in that case, you want to feel that pain. And if this, you know, if this gets developed further, you'll still be able to feel it. But what will happen is that if you feel like abnormal pain over and over, like if the nerve is injured instead of telling you what normally you should feel, then it will stop that. So it's actually a huge, um, a huge development. So the thing to think about is, let's say that people have diabetes, for example, and their nerves are telling them that they have pain or that they're injured. This will actually help them. It will help people with cancer-related pain and stuff. So it's very exciting. Yeah, this is groundbreaking. Let's take a look at some of the stats on this. 116 million Americans, as we mentioned, experience chronic pain each year. It affects more Americans than diabetes, heart disease, and cancer combined. It's the most common cause of long-term disability, and half of those suffering with it fail to get adequate relief. Also, uh, a thing with the current medicines that, that folks are using who deal with this is you can build up a tolerance quite quickly to it. Exactly. So one of the problems with opioids, I mean, it works on different pathways, like you were mentioning. So you can actually take some and it can work in the short term, like after surgery, it works really well for that type of pain. But for long term conditions, if you think about low back pain and stuff, it starts to lose its effect over time. So it's not as helpful. Now, if we think about the pathways for pain, there's actually a lot involved. So there's the pain signal itself, but then there's suffering and that has to do with whether you think that the pain will actually end. So you could do things that are painful, let's say like ear piercing or eyebrow waxing, but you're not really suffering when those things happen because you realize that it's going to go away. It's not really harmful. Now, in a lot of different types of chronic pain, you don't know when it's going to end. So that you know, uh, so many of our returning military members have so much pain and all of these pain pills have caused a big problem for a lot of people. Exactly. So uh, what I want to know is from the discovery of something like this, how long does it take till people can think maybe there is some sort of hope coming for me with this? Exactly. Well, it's a huge development that scientists have found, but this is only in mice, so it's not in humans. So what they have to do now with this pathway is take a look to see, okay, how can we find something that will work on this pathway without affecting other pathways? So it takes some time. Then once they develop it, they have to look to see if it's safe in humans because there's some differences uh, between animal studies and human studies. And then from that, they look to see how effective can it be. So, so what does that boil down to? Is any idea on a time frame for this? Uh, not the time frame itself, but it's a huge development because if you think about all the drugs in the past, like you mentioned with the opioids, a lot of the new medications have to do with making things uh, work a little bit longer, have fewer side effects. They're not necessarily new types of medications, whereas here we have the opportunity to get a new type of medication that works differently. Right, so we're talking pain management, but what other diseases or issues, illnesses, could this research potentially help? Well, so there are different types of pain. Now, we were talking about if you have surgery, right? If you have that type of pain where there's an injury going on or some kind of trauma at the moment, but then there's also nerve-related pain, there's cancer-related pain, and then if you think about arthritis and other things, I mean, there are some theories now that even though arthritis actually has to do with the joint, that it might be something abnormal that goes on with so the processing. So there's potentially a lot more for this, which is great news. Thank you, Dr. Debbie. Appreciate oh, great. it. Great. Thank All you. All right.